Are we alone? Are we really alone? Not as in isolation from other human beings, but as in the fact that we are truly unique in the universe and no other living beings exist. With observations of thousands of planets, some Earth-like, no alien life has been discovered. This can only mean one thing, humans are indeed alone in the universe. This theory, highlighted in what is called the Rare Earth Hypothesis, suggests no other alien life exists, has existed, or will exist due to the extremely unique conditions that had to occur on Earth for life to develop here. While this may seem logical, this hypothesis is in fact flawed. Of course, there isn't a perfect way to prove or disprove the theory, but scientists can say with a fair amount of certainty that Earth is not rare and alien life should be able to exist. To begin with, let's look at a brief history of the hypothesis itself. The term Rare Earth Hypothesis originates in Peter Ward's and Donald E. Brownlee's book, Rare Earth, Why Complex Life is Uncommon in the Universe. Written in 2000, the book stands as an alternative perspective on alien life's commonality, giving a different view from other scientists like Carl Sagan's view of Earth being a typical planet within a typical solar system. Sagan and many others suggest that the universe is full of complex life, while Ward and Brownlee suggest that the friendly conditions that are found in our solar system are very rare. First, we'll look at the hypothesis requirements in order to sustain life, then we'll move on to the criticisms and conflicting theories that disprove the hypothesis. To begin with, the Rare Earth Hypothesis, which I'll simply call the REH for short, requires a proper location within a suitable galaxy. These cannot be located in so-called dead zones and can rather be found in galactic habitable zones. These zones are always found far from galactic centers, but not in the galaxy's outer regions. This is due to numerous reasons, including less radiation from the black holes at galaxy centers and necessary life-sustaining metals being found at a healthy distance from the center. Essentially, this habitable zone is sandwiched between an uninhabitable center and an uninhabitable extremity. Next, these life-supporting planets must be found at a reasonable orbit around a suitable star. The REH suggests life must have liquid water to occur, so if the planet were too close to its star, the water would be gaseous, and if the planet were too far away from its star, water would freeze. In addition, the REH calls for a suitable arrangement of planets. Ward and Brownlee propose that the solar system of an other life-carrying planet must be similar to our solar system. This is because the other planets, like our gas giants, minimize the probability of an extinction-causing asteroid to make it all the way to that life-sustaining planet. There are several other conditions that the REH requires, but looking at them in depth would drag the video on a bit and would make it quite boring. So instead, here's a brief overview of the remaining conditions. Planet must have a stable orbit, it must be terrestrial, it must be just the right size to have a sufficient atmosphere, it must have plate tectonics which move land masses and therefore can create biodiversity which is a strong defense against extinction, it must have a large moon which allows for tidal forces, it must experience Experience at least one evolutionary trigger or it would never progress past having simple bacteria. And lastly, its life must experience evolution at the right time for obvious reasons, such as having a surface that can actually support that life. So, when one or more of these conditions is missing, Ward and Brownlee suggest that complex life cannot occur. Now, after having looked at what the REH proposes, let's look at some of its flaws. These range from not needing an asteroid catching gas giant to not needing plate tectonics, but I want to focus on two criticisms specifically. First, the sheer vastness of the universe, and second, the assumption that complex life must occur like the complex life on Earth did. Starting with the first point, there are quite literally trillions of stars in the universe, each with their own set of planets. In the Milky Way alone, there are an estimated 200 to 400 billion stars. And while habitable planets likely exist in these solar systems, extrasolar planets are also being discovered that could also contain life. Basically, scientists at the moment simply do not know how many life-sustaining planets there are, but we cannot rule out that there are ones we are not aware of yet. While not proven, it's safe to assume that out there in this huge universe, there are life-carrying planets. Moving on to the second criticism, the REH assumes that complex life must arise in the same way that complex life arose on Earth. For example, nearly all life on Earth needs oxygen to survive, and the REH assumes that for any life to arise anywhere in the universe, they too must have oxygen. 
However, tiny creatures here on Earth disprove Warden Brownlee's assertion that there is irrefutable evidence that oxygen is a necessary ingredient for animal life, including animals like metazoa that do not need oxygen to survive. Ultimately, hypothetical kinds of biochemistry could exist, such as non-carbon-based life forms. While these have yet to be completely proven, they are scientifically viable. So, in conclusion, the REH should not be blindly followed nor completely ignored. Until this point, it provides a solution to the lack of extraterrestrial contact. However, ultimately, life could exist elsewhere in ways we cannot even imagine or comprehend. It is important to realize that we know very little about other possible forms of life, but that doesn't make them any less possible. Thank you and have a good day. Also, I would like to apologize for my brief hiatus as well. I've been extremely busy with school and life in general. I know that's a silly excuse, and it is, but I hope to put out more videos as the summer progresses. Uh, thank you again for watching, and hope you guys enjoyed the video.